Hey, in the last video, we learned the theoretical details of decision trees. So how they learned, how they are trained. And in this video, I will show you how to implement them on scikit-learn using Python. Uh, we will look into some of the parameters that you can use. We will look into some very helpful functions that it has built in. And generally, we will try to get a better understanding of how you can start using them today on a Python on a Jupyter Notebook. So without further ado, let's get started. We have a bunch of things to look into, of course, but the first thing that we need to do is to import a data set. For this one, I'm using a built-in data set from scikit-learn. Uh, you can import it like this, basically, just if you want other data sets, of course, go to scikit-learn data sets, just Google it, and then you'll find a list of data sets uh, that are built in in scikit-learn that you can easily import. Uh, this one is called the breast, breast cancer data set. It's a classification data set. Let me show you what it looks like. So it's basically, uh, these are all the calculations done on a, or measurements done on a tumor that was collected or a mass that is collected from a breast. Uh, of course, we are not doctors. We don't really know what these things mean, uh, but we don't really have to also, you know, we're just using this data set to understand how decision trees, uh, trees can be implemented with scikit learn. So uh, this is just the data set looks like. Uh, we have 30 columns. Uh, each of them is a measurement for a tumor. And then as a target, variable we are learning if a, a one line this is a one data point or one tumor is benign or malignant so that means benign means it's not cancerous or it, it, i don't i don't really know the medical term there but i think it's like just not bad for you everything's fine if it's malignant it means that it, it has cancer and you need to be treated basically uh on a very simple level let's say okay uh before we feed this data set to our um let me make it a little bit closer. Yeah, before we give it to our decision tree, of course, we need to divide it to training and testing data sets. So uh, just to kind of give you a structure, at first I'm going to show you how we can um, train a simple default decision tree, and then we are going to go into the details of how you can change it to uh, how you need. Um, okay, com coming back to the training and testing separation, inside scikit-learn, there is a default uh, built-in function to separate training and testing data sets. So you might remember this from your other training of machine for machine learning. Uh, X means just all the features that you want to give to determine uh, if this data point is benign or malignant, basically. And this is uh, all the columns that I have in this data set. And Y is a target value, basically. And that's going to be either zero or one, depending on if it's like good or bad. Um, this built-in data or this built-in function only needs the X and the Y, basically, uh, as I showed here. And the test size means how much of it would you like to set aside for testing. So for training, the training data set means we are giving it all the examples, but we are also giving it the answer so the model can train and learn. Uh, whereas for the test one, we're only going to be giving the features or, for the, or the columns, and then it's going to create the predictions itself. So that's how we're going to test to see if our model is performing well or not. Uh, how to do predictions. How to train the decision tree is basically very simple. You have to import the decision tree classifier or basically the um, the model itself from the scikit-learn library and you have to create it. Once we start putting in parameters, this is where we're going to put it in. And then all you have to say is classifier fit and you give the training values for the X values and the Y values and then it creates you a nice little decision tree model. <laughs> That's all. Um, of course, right now we're using the default parameters. So if you run this one, which is which gives you all the parameters that are being used in this model, you're going to see that it's the default values. Um, yeah, so these are all the default values. Max depth is none, max features is none. We're going to learn more about what these are in a second, uh, but yeah. If you want to use instead the regressor, it's very simple. 
then you only need to import regressor. And how, if you're like, oh, but I don't know how to import these things. When you find the um, documentation from Google, so basically by just writing uh, scikit-learn decision tree regression or scikit-learn decision tree classification, you're going. this is going to be either the first or the second page to pop up. So this is the scikit-learn documentation. You just need to scroll down and then see these examples and it's going to tell you how to import it here basically so you just need to copy and paste this code to your notebook okay um now we trained our data set but of course you want to do some predictions with it there are two ways how you can get predictions the first one is by giving it the x test uh, data set so it's basically my data points where I want to, where I haven't told the model the answers to, I just want to get the answers that it can, it comes up with. Let's look at what it looks like. So it's something like this. Uh, my training, my, or my whole data set had 569 rows and for the testing we set aside nearly 200. Um, if I do a prediction, it's going to give me the class number that it's predicting. So it's going to say for the first one, I am predicting that it's malignant. For the second one, I'm predicting that it's benign. Second one, I'm predicting that it's benign, so on and so forth. So uh, this was just a way to see generally how your um, model is predicting on the new information that it's giving you. Another way to see predictions is using predict proba. Then it will give you the probability it has for each of the um, classes. So let's see. So it says for the first instance, so the first data point, so this one, I am predicting that it's going to be um, class zero with uh, one out of one chance and class one with zero out of one chance. Uh, so there is a reason that our all our probabilities are zero or one because we did not have any uh, early stopping criteria. So our tree just like grew and grew and grew and grew all the way until there was no other way to split. But if we put a very simple stopping criteria, like let's say max depth can be four. So the maximum depth that the tree can have, tree can have is four. So you can see here. And let me remove this one. And then we do predictions again. The predictions will st are still going to look the same because it's going to give us uh, the prediction. So it's going to tell us either zero or one based on which one has the higher prob uh, probability. But if you look at the probabilities now, we're going to see that they're a little bit different. So now it's kind of less sure uh, which one it should be because we stopped the tree before it was able to grow all the way where the leaves are going to be pure of, uh, of one class. So if doesn't if this doesn't make sense to you, you should go back and watch the first video. I think then it's going to make more sense to you what I mean here. <laughs> all right, um, so we have the probabilities, we have the predictions for each of the test uh, instances. But how are we going to see if this is good or not? We have to compare it to the actual information, of course. How are we going to do that is by using uh, performance metri metrics. Most of the performance metrics that you're going to need or use are already going to be built in in scikit-learn. So first one is accuracy, for example. It says this model has an accuracy of 0.92 or 93. Uh, if you want to see, you can find the confusion matrix. Uh, so this is, you know, if the class is zero and when the class is zero and it's predicted as zero, that happened 69 times. When the class is one and predicted as one, this happened 105 times. And these are the wrongly classified instances. Uh, another one that you can see is precision score, for example. So this is basically precision. If you want to see recall, so let's see, okay, um, you know, I'll, I'll just show you how I find these things. Scikit-learn recall. And yeah, this is the first thing that pops up and then I can go look at the examples. It says I need this one to calculate recall. And Uh, my tr 
true values are called y test and the predictions are called predictions. Yeah, and then I get my recall score too. So it's that simple. There is also a nice function that they have here. Uh, it's called classification report. And I think then you can basically see precision and recall and F1 score and everything together. There also might be a regression report similarly that you can find. Um, of course, you see here the mac macro, macro average, weighted average, etc., etc. So there are some, or like precision and recall separately for malignant and benign. Uh, I will not go into details of what these things are in this video because, you know, this is about decision trees, but yeah, I can make a separate video about that later. But let me know if you would like to learn about it. Um, all right. So before we go into feature importance and other things, I want to show you some of the parameters that decision trees have. So let's go back to our model. So it was, we're only using max depth four right now. All right, uh, so let me pull up a list of the stopping criteria. So these are all the settings, let's say, that you can change to stop the tree from growing all the way to its maximum possible length. Max depth tells me how deep can the tree be. So when there's one node, when there's one decision, that's uh, depth of one. So when you make the decision or when there's only one node, then that's a depth of one. When you have a decision node there and then you make a split, then you tree, your tree has a depth of two. And then those nodes split and then you get the decision tree of depth, depth of three. So that goes further and further. Sometimes decision trees can grow to be very long. So if you, if you want to, I mean, these things are not really things that you can know beforehand. You cannot really say, oh yeah, I want my max step to be three because I know that's going to give me the best results. No, most of the time what you do is you try. Uh, you try different values for this and then you see which one works best. Uh, so yeah, max depth basically gives you the depth of the tree. Um, there are some other ones here. As you can see, these are all the stop and criteria. If you want to learn more about what they are, how they change when you stop the tree, you can, you can find them all here. These are all the parameters that the tree has. You can go and read about them here. They have different ways of stopping the uh, tree trees growth, let's say, the training um, process. I think if you have more than one stopping criteria set up, it's going to just stop with the first one that it reaches. Um, but yeah, so just, you know, go ahead and learn more about them and then try it and then you'll see the difference that it uh, creates in your performance or the creating the performance of the tree. Uh, another thing that's important for us, other than the stopping criteria, are the approach of the decision tree. So here are some of the approaches, or the, some of the settings that you can change for the approach. The first one is criterion. What is criterion? So in the previous video, I talked about, if you remember, that there are two different algorithms that you can use, CART algorithm and ID3 algorithm, and they are using different um, metrics of which feature they should use to split the data set, right? So um, criterion basically depend, or, or determines that one. Uh, the default, default one is Gini, but you can also use entropy. Again, if you don't know what these things are and if you're curious, go back to the first video and then watch it, the video about decision tree theory, and you will know what I'm talking about here. So this is the parameter that will help you determine how to uh, grow the tree or what to use to make the splits. The second thing that we can use to determine the approach to growing the decision tree or training the decision tree is splitter. Um, Basically, you have two options. You either choose the best one based on these two criterion, or you can just choose it randomly. That's also an option. You can also say, you know what? I want to go crazy. I want to just choose it in a random way, which uh, feature to split on. And yeah, you can do that. That's also a possibility. Uh, another one that's important to know is max features. So in the decision tree, we have, or let, let me show you here. We have 30 columns, right? You can say every time you want to make a decision, every time you want to make a split, only use 20 of them. And then the decision tree will decide which 20 randomly 
and then it will compare their entropy to each other or their information gain to each other and select the best one. So maybe the actual best one is outside of that group of 20, but still it will choose only the one, the best one in that group of 20. So that's an option that's available to you. If you want, you can choose the, not the max depth, but the max number of features to be less than the amount of columns that you have, the total amount of columns that you have, and then there will be some more randomization involved. Uh, random state is basically helping this randomization of um, the when you choose less than the amount of columns that you have, then there needs to be uh, some randomization, of course. Um, if you give an integer for the random state, then it's going to be creating the same, same results from this randomization every single time. But if you don't give anything to the random state, it's going to be super random every time. But if I add a parameter to be like random state five, then I'm going to get the same tree over and over again, even when I have some randomization involved. Um, okay, I think this was clear. Uh, these are all the things that you can do to change the approach of the tree. And uh, there is one other thing that's important to know, and that is this one, class weight. So, oh, why did I run this? <laughs> it's not like it's gonna run. Class weight is, this is specific to classification. This doesn't uh, exist in regression. You know, so when you're doing classification, you're going to have one, two, or three, or maybe more classes that your model is going to try to predict. And sometimes one of those classes might be a little bit more important than the other ones. And with class weight, you can determine this in the model and you're basically going to say, hey, it's more important uh, or it's worse when you make an error uh, predicting class one than when you do a mistake trying to predict class two. So then it's going to take it into consideration into how it grows or into its Gini index or entropy. Um, all right, so these are all the parameters that are relevant. Uh, the next thing that we can look at is the feature importance. So with decision trees, as I said in the previous video, I think I mentioned that uh, one of the best things is that it's interpret interpretable. <laughs> Very hard word to say. Uh, so you can actually understand how the decision tree is deciding. And one of the things that comes with this is you can actually learn or you can see which features are more important than the others. So let's go here. I'm getting all my features. These are all the features that I have. And it's very simple. You can just say classification, feature importances. Well, let me show you what this creates anyways in the first place. And then it will give me a list corresponding to this list of how important that corresponding feature to determine the result of your uh, prediction. So, and when I put it into a data frame and everything, I can see feature importance like this. And if you want, this is very common to do, you can make it into a plot and let's see. Yeah, and then you can basically see it in a plot and then you, it's easier to kind of understand, okay, versus perim perimeter is the one of the best things that uh, determines if a tumor is uh, benign or malignant. So this is very important to really understand your um, model. This, does, this is not really possible with uh, most other machine learning algorithms. So this is like a really big plus for decision trees. Uh, another way to see your, how your data set is or how your model is working is to create a plot of the tree. And this is very simple. You are basically creating this tree of like an actual tree of how it decides. So for example, uh, you know, when, when you get one line, one data point, uh, it says worst perimeter, is it bigger than 110.25 or greater than or lower than that one? If it's lower than that one, go here. If it's greater than that one, go here. And then another decision point and another decision point. Uh, so as far as the depth goes, as you can see, this is the first depth, second, this is the third level, fourth level, this whole thing, and the fifth level. Um, or now that actually, now that I counted it, I said max depth to be four, so probably this starts from zero, and then one, two, three, and four. Uh, we can actually see how it changes when we change the parameters. So we said max depth should be four, right? So let's change that to like 
not before. Let's just have the default tree. Let's have it grow as much as possible. And then let's look at the, how the tree looks. Okay, so this is a much busier tree. Maybe the depth doesn't even go further, but probably this is then enough, you know, for the tree to uh, grow. But yeah, then it's, it's kind of like a more dense tree. And one other important thing that I nearly forgot to mention is pruning for decision trees, right? We talked about it in the previous video, how it's an important way or how it's a very used way of uh, making sure that the tree is not overfitting to your data set. How you do that with scikit-learn is with a parameter actually. So this parameter is called CCP alpha. Um, we can go and see the definition here. It's basically, it, there is a algorithm on top of the decision tree algorithm to prune it and it's called minimal cost complexity pruning. Uh, I'm not going to go into details, but if you want to read more about it, there here's a link uh, for it. Uh, to the describing the details and the general math that is behind it. But when you give it a value that's bigger than zero, the default value is zero. When you give it a value bigger than zero, then it's going to prune your tree. So let's try. So we saw that our tree was a little bit big. So if I give it this value, I expect for the tree to be a little bit pruned. So this is what we have right now. And when a tree is a bit pruned, then as you can see that value is apparently even already too big. So then I have a very nice and simple tree that was pruned. Um, but let's see how the accuracy changed. Accuracy didn't even, no, I have to do the prediction again. Um, yeah, let's see now. Okay, it looks like the accuracy increased. <laughs> so, you know, that, that's perfect. I guess our tree was uh, overfitting maybe to our decision, um, to our data set. I think that's all we have with decision trees. So just, you know, it's very simple. As I said, just import them, import one of the sets that they have built in in their system. And yeah, just play around with it, change some of the settings and then see how it changes your uh, accuracy. But yeah, I hope this was helpful. Uh, I hope you learned uh, something at least. And yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you around.